So, let us now start on with constrained optimization, algorithms for constrained optimization. Constrained optimization algorithms. Now, there are the the uh, the constrained optimization the methods for constrained optimization are again very extremely varied and there are many different types of uh, types of methods out there. But the simplest I will let us start with the simplest method which which basically attempts to convert uh, a, a constrained optimization problem into an un, uh, into an unconstrained one and it is a very elegant and nice method and I, so let us just see what, what this uh, what this idea here is. So, this is what is called a penalty method. So, the the in a constrained optimization problem what we are faced with is a problem like this you want to minimize a function f uh, subject over a set s. Now, what what a penalty method does is it says let it looks for a uh, it, 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 it looks for a function p. So, introduces a function p introduce a function p such that the following holds first p is continuous to p is non negative for all x and 3 so, p is a function now from r n to r. So, it is defined on the entire space. So, it is a it is continuous it is greater than equal to 0 and it is 0 if and only if it is uh, it, it is 0 if and uh, so, p of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is in s. So, when you are in the set it is uh, in the uh, when you satisfy the constraints or you are in the feasible region then p is 0 and everywhere else uh, it is positive. But, it, uh, but unlike the kind of function that we had seen in uh, when we were talking of duality where we had defined this sort of you re, if you recall we had defined these i 0 and i plus functions which went from 0 to infinity uh, outside the feasible regions these the function p is a continuous function. So, it is not just it it is not uh, it is not that uh, it is not um, uh, it is not an ill behaved function ok. So, it is a continuous function it it has it it is 0 on the on the feasible region and outside it is positive, but because it is continuous it will bring with it a little bit of baggage it means that it is uh, you cannot it is not going to be an exact it is not going to give you an exact reformulation uh, of of the constraint optimization you would need to do a little bit more work in order to so, uh, solve the constraint optimization problem using the penalty function ok. So, first let us look at a few examples of this sort of function. So, so let us say suppose my constraint s um, so right here examples. So, suppose my constraint s is just x or my feasible region s is just x such that h of x is um, is equal to 0 right. So, it is some uh, some one or more inequality constraints. So, in that case what is the correct penalty function for this sort of set? So, one can take for instance p of x as simply norm h of x. Now, what is why uh, or norm h of x squared if necessary. So, what why why can we do this? The reason we can do this is that you can see that h of x is equal to 0 if and only if norm x is equal to 0. So, so property 3 holds uh, for free. So, p of x is 0 only on this on the set s. 
everywhere it is obviously greater than equal to 0 and if your h is continuous, p is continuous right h is if h is continuous p is continuous right. So, so as a consequence we get that um, so let me write this here. So, where where h is continuous. So, if p h is uh, so if h is continuous p is continuous and so therefore, this is now a penalty function. So, how can one do this for an inequality function uh, inequality constraint? So, another example would be uh, say s which is x such that g of x is less than equal to 0 what what would be uh, uh, what would be an appropriate penalty function for this. Well, one can do uh, take for example, p as as the maximum of 0 comma g of x. So, what does this do? So, this this is a max of if and g again is continuous. Now, what does this uh, this p of x do? The p of x is the maximum of 0 and g of x. So, when uh, uh, so, it is a maximum of 2 continuous functions, one is just a constant function. See, it is a maximum of 2 continuous functions. So, it is also a continuous function. So, it so, it satisfies 1, it is a max it is a maximum of 0 and something. So, it is always greater than equal to 0. So, it satisfies 2 and when is this equal to 0? Well, this would be equal to 0 only when g x is itself less than equal to 0. So, when this is less than equal to if so p of x is equal to 0 if and only if g of x is itself less than equal to 0. So, consequently it satisfies satisfies 3 also right. So, this 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 gives us another a penalty function another kind of penalty function. Now, obviously, this is not as nice as this function because it is it is it it is it is non differentiable, but uh, uh, so you can you can even do a little you can make this a little smoother. For example, you can also do this the whole squared and that will that will ensure that the derivative uh, that that will give you a little bit more differentiability also at at the uh, at points where uh, p of x is equal to 0. Right. So, what is the method now? What is the penalty method? The method itself is this. So, what does one do? You you define so so define this 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 function q, the function q of x given c k. Okay. I'll, I'll explain what this is. So, this is or let's say x given c. So, this is defined as f of x plus c times p of x. So, you have your original function plus c times the penalty function ok, where what is c? c is any constant, c greater than 0 is a constant. So, for a given c you will define this sort of function. So, what has this done? It has defined it has given you a new objective, it is given you a new function where where you have the original function plus a constant times a penalty. Now, when you are on the in the feasible region, the penalty function by uh, by property 3, the penalty function should be 0. So, in that case, therefore, the uh, uh, q is actually identical to f. So, in the feasible region, minimizing q is actually the same as minimizing f. But then what we will be doing is not minim we are not going to put constraints anymore. The whole idea of a penalty method was to convert the pro un was to convert a constraint problem to an unconstrained problem. So, the what the method would do is it would do the following it would so, so take it will take an increasing sequence. c k going to plus infinity ok. So, it has a increasing sequence of constants c k going to plus infinity and by increasing I mean c k plus 1 has to be 
greater than equal to ck right so this is a sequence like this where it goes to plus infinity and then what does one do at each step for each k solve minimize q of x given c k over x in r n. The then so, what are we doing at each step? At each step you 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 take your constant and minimize uh, and minimize q of x given c k. So, what is going to happen with as as your k increases as your k increases your c k increases and becomes increasingly large. So, whenever what this tends to do is that whenever the c k is becoming extremely large if if your if your x goes into the region where p is not not 0 that means where p is positive that is the region outside your feasible region it tends to blow up the value of of c times p. So, if your x wanders into this region where p is positive because you are multiplying it outside by a large constant c k the value gets blown up. So, as so when you are minimizing q here when you are minimizing q the op the a better value for uh, a better value uh, for x can be found where uh, can be found where uh, in the region where p is actually 0 that means in the region s itself. So, what it does is as 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 k becomes larger your you the minimization tends to gravitate more and more towards uh, this minimization this unconstrained minimization in effect tends to gravitate more and more towards the feasible region s and it starts producing looking for iterations in looking for solutions in the in the region s itself although you have not actually imposed them as constraints though you have not imposed them as constraints it sort of implicitly looks for those uh, for uh, for solutions in that in that region because outside that region the objective value itself becomes very large so so it becomes uh, so so the iteration will tend to look for those uh, for solutions there right so so the uh, the result that we have for this is the let me state it as a theorem so let xk so let this suppose the iterate generated here is xk so let let xk be generated by the penalty method above then any limit point x uh, of the sequence x k is a solution of the minimization of f over x in s. So, what does this mean? So, you keep doing this for uh, over k and keep increasing it increasing uh, increasing your c k eventually you get a sequence the sequence will gravitate towards the towards uh, if it if it has a limit point it will that limit point will will be a solution will be a solution of this particular problem. Now, the uh, the the thing that you that is interesting here is that when you are solving uh, when you are solving this this problem for uh, for uh, when you are minimizing sorry when you are solving this particular problem you are minimizing f plus something else over this entire region uh, right. So, uh, so what you uh, what you actually end up doing which is uh, somewhat in uh, counter intuitive may seem counter intuitive is that you are approx you end up approximating f from below. So, you end up uh, so, so your your objective value actually increases to the optimal solution rather than 
rather than decreasing to the optimal solution which is what you would otherwise do in an optimization problem and that that happens because of the because because you are penalizing the constraints and then it's the it's the nature of the penalty function that creates this effect okay all right so so with this actually uh, let me also mention to you that there is an an a slightly uh, related uh, type of method which is called a barrier method a barrier method only uh, what it does is instead of uh, instead of act, instead of penalizing the entire con, uh, the con, uh, entire constraint it tends to penalize the approach towards the boundary so as as you go towards the boundary the barrier function blows up and so you, it tends to keep you within the constraint so uh, in a penalty method you are allow, you are searching all over the space in the in the entire space rn without without going out of out of the uh, uh, without uh, without imposing the constraint and then eventually you end up inside the constraint whereas in a barrier method you do not impose the constraint but you impose dip, uh, mo, you put uh, you penalize movement towards the barrier towards the boundary of the constraint so that gives you a different type of method all right all right so with this i think uh, i will end today's lecture we can then we will continue on with more optimization algorithm in the next lecture